The object that I brought was Super Serial, but I must tell you the story behind Super Serial. First of all, let me thank you all for being here, for spending two hours out of your day to come and hear about resilience, about rebirth, and to, and, but before I go on thanking you, I need to thank Ludvika Rossi Purini. Those of you who know Ludvika know, she is, know that she's a force of nature. And she had this idea that we should have this conversation here in Rome about rebirth and resilience and the opportunity to make a difference that we all share. And when Ludvika has an idea, things happen. And here we all are today. I, we all come here with different stories, and we each bring contributions that are different. Uh, but we are united. All the speakers here today, you'll hear a united commitment to tackle global problems, to make a difference, to build resilience. Because as a, as, and I speak very particularly because I do run the World Food Program, but really there are 14,000 people around the world who are working to make a difference on uh, the lives of hungry people. And one of the areas that we are focused on is how do we provide the nutritional inputs that are necessary for the first thousand days of a child's life, which will not only determine the quality of that child's life, but whether that child will have the mental and physical resilience to withstand and overcome life shocks and crisis. In fact, we know that nutritional deficiency in the first thousand days will create irreparable mental and physical development. We know that to break the intergenerational cycle of poverty, hunger, and food insecurity, we must address the challenges of meeting the nutritional needs of pregnant and breastfeeding women and meet the needs of nutrition that children under from six months to two years of age. Today, we as a global community are failing 165 million children around the world suffering from chronic malnutrition. So today, I have brought a very important item with me. It is a one and a half kilo bag of Super Cereal Plus. Last year, thousands of small bags and special foods just like this one helped to change the lives of more than four million children. Following years of research, committed staff from WFP and its partners developed this fortified blended food. This super cereal is packed full of vitamins, minerals, and fats that can both prevent a child from stunting and support the acute moderate malnutrition needs of a child. Yes. I have witnessed mothers from across the world preparing this cereal into a wonderful and nutritious porridge, which their beautiful children so urgently need and deserve to reach their full potential. Ladies and gentlemen, this bag full of promise, this bag that builds resilience of those children costs just $2 and provides the needs of one child for one week. This one bag will create the resilience necessary to support a child's opportunity for a better life. To achieve a global rebirth, we must end global hunger and chronic malnutrition. To achieve a global rebirth for the world's poor and most vulnerable, we must also build their resi resilience, inoculating them from shocks and crises, ensuring their ability to sustainably and durably feed themselves and their children. Where there is hunger, there is insecurity. Where there is undernutrition, there is underdevelopment. Failure to make a progress on food and nutrition security will undermine all of our development efforts. And making this progress is as much or more an issue of economics as it is of one of welfare, social protection, and human rights. To tackle this problem, we need to work in many different ways. We must respond with activities that both build the immediate and long-term impacts, building resilience from the bottom up. 
We must tackle the root causes of hunger and the root causes of malnutrition, not just the consequences. We must determine if the hunger problems arise from lack of available adequate food or from lack of access to adequate nutritious food. Last year, WFP worked in 80 countries, helping the most vulnerable meet their food needs. Yes, we provided foods to those in need. In many places around the world, we also began the difficult but necessary work of helping many rural families begin the difficult but not impossible journey towards building their capacity to feed their own children. We did this by harnessing their strengths, working with smallholder farmers, engaging local businesses, and partnering with NGOs and governments. Because to eliminate hunger and chronic malnutrition, we must work in new ways. Ways that invest in both boys and girls from their earliest days to their adolescence. We must help mothers and fathers strengthen their livelihoods. We must work with communities to build their resilience. And we must empower governments to deliver nationally owned solutions. We must do all this because we know that by nourishing the next generation, providing food like this, we can solve hunger. We can boost economic growth. And we can empower everyone to develop to their full potential. I have witnessed firsthand both the human consequences of hunger and the successes that we can achieve. In the village of Toka Bay, Niger, a place where malnutrition rates hover at an emergency level of almost 14%, where almost one in every six babies suffers from severe malnutrition, I stood with mothers who didn't complain, who were strong and hopeful, who fed their children dried leaves that they boiled six times to make them edible to keep their stomachs full. But because of generous contributions from governments around the globe, including Italy, WFP was able to provide them with CSB. They knew that the special foods combined with the committed efforts of local health workers would change their children's lives. But they also told me they were worried about long-term problems, the lack of rain, of nutritious foods, and of clean drinking water. Yes, in this place of crisis, WFP provided life-saving nutritional support. Yet we were also able to do more. In the next town, with the support of WFP and the government, women were building a dam that will provide water for the community. This dam will allow the women to irrigate their crops and to change their lives. This work not only feeds children's stomachs today, but builds families' resilience for tomorrow. I just returned from Yemen. It is a place where the crisis doesn't make the headlines of major news media. It is a place where chronic crisis, where more than 10 million people, almost half the country's population, are either hungry or on the edge of hunger. Child malnutrition rates are the highest in the world. Close to half of all Yemen's children under the age of five, two million children are stunted. Think about that. If we were here in this, if here in this room represent the children of Yemen, every second one of us, every second one of us will be the, have been denied the right to reach our full potential. While you yourself might be lucky, the child to your right and the child to your left will be denied the potential. Because remember, a chronically malnourished child doesn't grow to her full physical capacity. And a child who is stunted, physically admitted, cannot live to her full potential. So they wouldn't be in this room because they wouldn't have had an opportunity to achieve the outcomes that each one of you have achieved. There is so much that we can do to enable people of Yemen, the people of Niger, the people of Afghanistan, of Somalia. By implementing resilience programs, we can build the agricultural potential and strengthen lives and livelihoods, enable people to meet their own needs. Ladies and gentlemen, 
a rebirth is possible. The tools exist. The knowledge exists. What we need is the global public will that will enable sufficient and sustained investment in projects that not only support the immediate needs of people, but in projects that also support people's long-term resilience. And I think there is no better place on earth to create and blossom the idea of building global resilience than here in Rome. A global public will led by a Rome rebirth of a spirit to build global resilience. A Rome, birth, a Rome rebirth creating the Roman-led recognition that we live on a small planet, that we must care for our neighbors, whether a community away or continent away. I visited Bangladesh. I sat in a classroom with some of the most beautiful children you've ever wanted to see. And it was typical where the children came and they sang and they had painted me a picture that they presented. And then they, I asked them what did they want to be. And the first child raised their hand and said, I want to be a doctor. And half the class said, I want to be a doctor. And another child raised their hand and said, I want to be a teacher. And the other half the class raised their hand and said, I want to be a teacher. Because those were the only professionals that they knew were doctors and teachers. But then at the end, they all stood up. They walked to the front of the room. And they sang to me in English. And they sang, we shall overcome. And they sang, we shall overcome, just as children in the South in the 60s in the United States said, we shall overcome, because they believed the world would be different. These children believed their world would be different, because we were there. They believed that their tomorrow was going to be better, because what we would bring. They believed that their opportunities would help, would be changed because we would care enough. Working together, we have the ability to establish powerful partnerships that can change the global landscape from one of hunger to one of hope. Country by country, community by community, family by family, child by child, until no one goes hungry. Thank you all. Thank you. Can I keep the yes.